I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to sew a pumpkin fall pillow. Now you can do any design that you would like, but I'm offering a free pattern for a pumpkin. So this is the pillow that we'll be making together, and it's how to sew the pillow, but also how to make the blanket stitch that edges the pillow and then the running stitch that makes the design as well with some tips on how to make that nice and even and well stitched. So you'll learn a new stitch, you'll be learning about sewing a pillow itself, how to stuff it, how to cut it to the size that you want and so forth. So it's going to be a lot of fun. You can also see you can do other designs. This is a leaf design. You can do any design that you'd like, but the free pattern is going to be for the pumpkin. And if you would like, you can add face to make this a jack-o'-lantern like this. And that's part of the, the pattern as well. So it's kind of fun to do. So let's get started in how to sew a pumpkin fall pillow. The supply list is listed below with fabric of your choice, of course. We're going to cut a fabric square. It's easiest to do this with a yardstick and perhaps mark with a marking pencil, a white marking pencil, and then add one extra inch to the size that you want, both directions. So if you want a 16 by 16 inch pillow, you're gonna cut your square to 17 by 17 inches. Then you're going to take your felt and use the free pattern that I've given you on the link below to cut a pumpkin shape from the orange felt and pin it to just one square of your fabric. Go ahead and thread your needle because we're going to use the blanket stitch to attach this pumpkin or applique the pumpkin to this fabric. The Felt does not ravel, so it's really easy to do. I show you here how to tie a knot in the end of your thread, wrap it around your finger, and then roll it between your fingers and gently pull and it will make a knot. You can't do that, you could just do some overhand knots to make that knot. You're gonna come up from the back of the fabric right next to the felt, and then you're going to make a stitch down into the felt that is about a quarter an inch higher and a quarter an inch into the felt. So there's your quarter inch higher and a quarter inch down. And then pull that thread back because as you come up next to that stitch, right out to the side of the felt again, it's going to catch that loop and then you're going to gently pull and see how it makes an L shape there, an upside down L, but it makes a 45 degree angle. It's really important to get that nice and um, keep working with your stitch so it makes that nice L shape. And then you're just going to repeat that stitch and go all the way around the edge of your pumpkin shape. But see how e with each stitch we go through that little side loop and make that L shape and gently pull it back until it makes a nice 45 degree angle. That is the tip to making great blanket stitching. So again, proceed to go all the way around the outside edge of the felt. And you, when it's time to tie off, you get a kind of a short thread or you come to the end of the pumpkin uh, stitching. You're going to take a stitch that goes to the outside of that little loop <clears throat> that you make that makes that L shape. Go down through the fabric to the back of the fabric. You can do this whenever your thread gets short and you need a new piece of thread. You come to the back of the fabric and go through one of those little stitches, it won't show because it's on the back, make a small loop with your thread, and then you're going to come back with your needle and go through that loop and pull it gently shut. Right, so you're going to repeat this two or three times. Here's a picture of that, just that little loop that you bring your, your needle back through. The second thing we're going to do is make these ribbings or section types of things on your pumpkin with a running stitch. A running stitch just goes up and down, up and down through the fabric. You've, if you've ever done hand sewing before, you've probably done this stitch at some point in time. It's very simple. I make mine about a half an inch long and I come up again about a half an inch from the first stitch. Now on the pattern, I show where these ribbings can be. So you can mark that with a white pencil if you'd like. I didn't do that on this one, you can see. But make sure each time that it's laying flat 
when you are done with the blanket stitch as well that the whole piece lays flat. I did not use a, an embroidery hoop for that. But doesn't that look nice? It makes it look like it has those ribbings in it. Then cut out your stem and a leaf if you'd like to from the pattern out of the green felt and place that on and again you're going to attach it with a blanket stitch. Now on this one it's exactly the same as going around the red except you're going to make some little back and forth um, angles on the edge of those stem pieces. Now the trick to that is going ahead and making your blanket stitches and then trying to take a little stitch that attaches your, la your blanket stitch to the end of each of those little points so that it lays and stays nice as a blanket stitch. So you just kind of keep going around and attaching the end of each, there I am right there, attaching the end of the stitch to the point. And of course this is in fast motion, but you go all the way around that stem and then repeat with the leaf. And you might want to do a running stitch down through the middle of the leaf to give it kind of some detailing. I didn't put any detailing on the stem piece. You'll tie it in the back. Oh, by the way, when you take a piece of embroidery floss that you'll be using in this uh, in in your embroidery, make it about 18 to 24 inches long. Don't make it real, real long because it's easy to get knots in your thread and that's so frustrating, especially when you're learning to do an embroidery strip stitch. So it's much more important to take a shorter thread, tie it off, and get another piece of thread and do that over and over than it is to take a real long thread and get a knot in it. Oops, I pulled my needle off the thread there and had to re-thread it. That's always a bummer. <laughs> you just use a single thread. You don't double your thread up, but use a single thread. But I did use the entire piece of embroidery floss. I did not divide it up into pieces. So when you're done embroidering your stem, you can tie off your thread, of course, and then we'll shift to the jack-o'-lantern features. This is an optional thing. I chose not to do it on my pillow, but cut the features from black felt, the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. And of course, you could make other shapes if you want. And you're going to go ahead and sew those on with a blanket stitch if you would like to do it at this point. And that's what it would look like if you did that. So after you're done with that applique process, it's time to sew the pillow together. If you've done this before, it's very easy, but if you haven't, you'll learn a couple new skills here, which are quite easy too. It's a great learn to sew pattern. You're going to take your two pieces of fabric and place them together, right sides together, the nice sides together, and then pin all the edges around. Move the fabric until you're sure that they match up together. Now, if you're going to use a pillow form, then you're going to only sew three sides of that pillow. But if you're going to stuff it with fiber fill stuffing, then you're gonna sew four sides together, except you're going to leave a four inch opening on one side. Take a one half inch seam, make sure that you backstitch when you start and when you stop. When you're done with that, clip the corner edges of the pillow as shown in the picture just to take out the extra fabric that gets in the way when we turn it inside out. Then you're going to turn that pillow inside out, get those corners as square as you can. Slip your pillow form inside or take your fiber fill and stuff the pillow uh, to the fullness that you would like. Then you take the edge that was left unsewn and tuck the edges of those two pieces of fabric together, match the edges up and pin them well. And you will go to your sewing machine and sew close to the edge all the way across that opening to hold it shut. And that completes your whole pillow. That is not hard at all, is it? Isn't that a great learn to sew project? So use that for yourself or someone in your life that you'd love to teach to sew. It's a great starter project for that. So I love this pillow project. You could put any design on the front that you want. I did this leaf pattern and it turned out so nicely for fall. But just think about a snowflake for winter, or a flower for spring, or maybe a boat or something for summer. All kinds of ideas, and they would make wonderful gifts for someone else. So I hope that you've enjoyed the How to Sew a Pumpkin Fall Pillow. Come on over to Welcome to Nana's for lots more ideas. Come join the fun.